Hi world! Uh, I think world is maybe a little bit too much <laughs> Hi <laughs> <of> expectations! <laughs> Hi little YouTube community which we hope to grow with this video. Yeah, I think that's much better. But by the way, who are we? We're Maike and Lily. Better known as Malish. So we're back on our YouTube channel. Yay! We haven't been active here, but of course we've been active elsewhere. That's true, but having the new year just a few hours ahead and New Year's resolutions, we have decided let's go back to YouTube. Yeah, so 2019 is going to be all about YouTube, but of course not just being there, but also of course giving content. That's true. So stay tuned, stay connected. In the first days of January, we're going to share more about our plans. And right now, maybe we should go in a bit more of a comfy mode. Should lay I? back? Yes, I think so. Okay. Because the year is closing. It's been a, a tough, a hard, an exciting year. I think it was more an amazing year. It was definitely an amazing year. So I think we should use the last minutes of the year just to share and exchange amongst ourselves. So, Maike, talking about 2018, you said it was tough and challenging, and, uh, but what do you think have been the most exciting or challenging or tough milestones for you? Mm -hmm. Well, I think first of all, it was <coughs> setting up the company. <coughs> so, of course, we had each other, which of course helped, so I wasn't looking for a business partner. We just had to fine-tune our ideas. But all the technical thing about, you know, setting up a company, um, who to contact, marketing and branding. It's fun to sit here, but it's also <laughs> a lot of work It is before you actually can do that. And those were basically what made it hard on the one hand because we had to put in a lot of hours, but also the challenge was so huge, doing it all basically on our own, right? Yeah, and also like kind of part-time, yeah? And um, so we did all the things related to Malish after our full-time jobs. So working eight to, ten, to nine hours and then coming back home and studying the other eight to nine hours and, and this on, on a daily basis. So this is, I think, also something which was quite really challenging, right? So sometimes we were now recapturing it, we are asking ourselves, oh my God, how have we handled that? Improving our skills, imagine, our technical skills, but also our personal skills. That's developed true. tremendously. Absolutely, yeah. So in this year, I think we have developed more than in the last 10 years with uh, being in university or even uh, working mm -hmm. full-time in, in a great position as well. Yeah, that's true. So we have our company, we have our uh, resigning from our um, corporate jobs. Um, what else? Well, a big part is definitely global woman. No, that's true. <clears throat> That's true. So when we decided that this network idea would be good for us, but also for our environment and also for Germany, little did we know that what it really means to bring a network and to be the directors mm -hmm. of anything. It's a fancy name and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you meet a lot of great people, but this is really a lot, a lot, a lot of job behind. So for all the people um, approaching us and saying, well, oh my god, you are all over, you're having so much fun. Yes, it's part of it. <laughs> but the other part is that you really have to work hard to keep it up and uh, to fill the breakfasts, to um, even be on social media. I mean, for us, I, I think the most <laughs> important thing for us was the social media uh, setup as well. Because, I mean, we've been on our private side kind of active in social media, kind Well, of. me so-so. Yeah, I, I didn't I'm, share too much. I was mm. a little bit active on Instagram under pseudonym, um, but to have the... So I look on the wall because there is our strategy for the next year, there's the social media strategy. So this was also a big learning for us as well to uh, build up, so coming from Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube <laughs> right now, so... And using it in a professional way. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's really not learning, it's not about food, it's not about saying, well, you know, I climbed Mount Everest, of course, which is good, and if you do, you should post it, but also how do you use this to 
present yourself and your business. And it's, it's amazing what you mm -hmm. can do and what we still can do and what mm -hmm. we will do mm -hmm. for 2019. For 2019, that's true, yeah. That's about, yeah, and also you know, talking about easy being on stage, yeah, sounds fun. Yeah, <laughs> you better be prepared. <laughs> better be prepared. In certain ways, especially uh, not only global women, but all contexts, what I've noticed, it's really two on the stage, also two with kind of equal share and equal, equal ability to present. And to divide this in a way which, you know, is good for us, but also for the presenter, that is tough. And is. Uh, it's often spontaneous, but still you need to have some rules some setups, um, because otherwise our eyes would not be painted blue, but they would be actually. <laughs> <laughs> I just think about our first stage appearance in New York. Yeah, so for the Global Women Summit. Summit, Summit mm -hmm. and I mean, how many weeks before we thought about how should we do this? Two minutes? It was two or five? It was only it was two, two minutes. minutes. Yeah. So two minute pitch and how to decide on the music uh, with which we should enter the stage and stuff like that. So we drove ourselves crazy like for a month and at the end of the day yeah we worked something out and it was great but then continuing with the other stage appearances mm -hmm. it was more like on a spontaneous with the routine, with, the, with, yeah. the, with another setup as well but uh, but our opening speech of one hour this was something <laughs> this was a really um, interesting experience and uh, also to divide that every so each of us has the same speaking time and having it scripted and uh, really um, so our main approach was to ent entertain not just staying there and trying to sell something or tell about oh my god how terrible or great our life is but uh, really to give an entertainment uh, mm -hmm. hint on that as well but also not <coughs> losing you know the seriousness also the business relations and to balance personal and business, mm. it's just really also a challenge. And I think what we both only realized this year, especially also in an international context, so for the Germans who are watching, it's probably like, what, what are you now talking? Mm. But what we are doing, we're coaches and consultants. What we sell is our knowledge, the way we are, we appear, and people must get a feel for us. So, of course, we do have references, but people don't buy our product. We don't sell washing machines which you can say, well, it saves 10 liters of water, you need half the detergent. No, what we sell is ourselves. So you need to let people know what you are, at least in a business context. And to balance that, that is that's a challenge. It's a challenge. I, I think it's still a challenge. <coughs> but um, let's capture one more thing. Um, so this year we have met really incredible people, haven't we? So also being on international stages, Traveling a lot, so 70% of the year we were traveling more or less and uh, really meeting incredible people. So the top three people you met this year, who are they? Top three people? Um, well, definitely, this is of course for both of us, is uh, one person is Mirella Sula, the yes. founder of Global Woman. Yeah. I think she inspired us with her openness towards us, with her willingness to share her concept, her ideas, um, to let us in the inner circle, so to say, without any prejudices, um, sharing her idea, her wisdom, her network with us, also allowing us to go on stage and also present ourselves. So the idea of that you are whoever you are and at what point you are doesn't matter, just as long as you come together, <clears throat> if you want support, get your support, if you want to settle a business idea, sell your business idea. Um, this has, of course, helped us with Global Woman, mm. but also personally, I think we could develop, and it also showed me that um, if you first, if you give, then it'll all come back. Maybe not from that same person, but in one way or another, the good things you do always come back. Mm. Who else? Who else? I really liked Erin Laszlo. Mm -hmm. We met him in Tirana, and he's such mm. a, he's, <coughs> has such a long history of. Um, studying languages, studying behaviors, thinking about the universe um, in general, but also particular interactions. And he's also, I think he's seen a better world, or he also dreamt of a better world, but still he's not frustrated. He's mm. looking to create something new. And this even at the age of 
close to 90, 90 yeah. still so being so positive about life, although um, you have decades to look back and things seem to be better, they seem to be easier, maybe also when your health was better, um, you're much more optimistic when you're young and then you tend to, of course it's natural, grow a bit more pessimistic with the ages. And to keep that in old age, that's one of my top goals. That's um, also Barbara was the yeah, second Barbara, person I met. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So being so positive in, in their age. So just think about our private environment or about our grandmothers. So mm. we are lucky to have grandmothers in their late 80s, beginning of 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, so sometimes to see them equally in the age to those two and uh, just different verbs, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, just make your own reality. Mm -hmm. Barbara Masabic said, news on TV is about what isn't working. Mm -hmm. So just create your own news and your own reality and change whatever part of life you can change. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. What about yours? Cool. So of course, you know, those are the... We met them together, yeah, yeah. but you probably have also another look of people inspired you and you also had a special uh, yes. more special uh, that yeah, I didn't have. No one had this <laughs> yeah, year, but that's you did. True, that's true. So I think the most um, interesting and impressive person I met so we met but I had the interaction with was Les Brown. So um, this was really something a really special experience for myself because mm -hmm. he did a pitch for me. So he chose the person out of the audience in New York and it was me and uh, so I gave him a few keywords about my life and about myself and he created a pitch for me. So by the way I have kind of to, to use it as well, <laughs> have not implemented it. And this was like, um, yeah, really impressive because he, so when I met him um, eyes to eyes and it was like a feeling that he can look inside me or through me and, and scan and he got a pitch within seconds. And I mean, you heard it. Was it like me? Was it my personality? He pitched. Mm -hmm. It was like yeah. <clears throat> in a few, and I gave him like a few keywords. Yeah. So basically, he asked mm -hmm. sentences like, "Where do you live? What's the name of the person who inspired you most? Why was that person the one that inspired you?" Mm -hmm. And then he created a story, an introduction, a story, a story of which story. was catchy. But also very close to reality, so <laughs> that was a really interesting part. Yeah, and also really uh, giving something of my personality, because mm -hmm. uh, when we were in New York, so this was also like in a global woman context, and nobody knew us. So we were absolutely new to the community, we were new to the directors, nobody had a clue who we are, but we were there, we were on the stage. And uh, yeah, after this, the, the people get to know more or they felt more comfortable with us, I would say. Kind of. Yeah, this was basically the first time that showed me really if you share something mm. about yourself, about your past, about also your motivation. Because mm. people often have a strong motivation. They don't go after, I don't know, they don't harvest fruit for nothing. They have often a strong motivation for whatever they do in life because of their story. And it just resonates so much better. <coughs> Storytelling, basically. Storytelling, that's, uh, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that, that's the keyword. Yeah. But we coming from the corporate, uh, used to uh, facts and facts short, and facts. sharp presentations, yeah. and not giving away a lot of personality behind that. So I, I have still a problem with that, honestly. So to give too much mm -hmm. uh, or find the balance of uh, private and, and, and business in, in, in this way. Um, but yeah, so storytelling, because as you said, we are selling ourselves and uh, not a product like a washing machine or, I don't know, a pen or something like that. Yeah, so Les Brown was really impressive. And uh, talking more locally, so thinking, thinking about Pedro, Pedro mm -hmm. Ferreira, so he is yeah. a really great networker here in, this er in, in the area of Rhein-Main. And I, I have the feeling he's all over the place and has, I don't know, three or five twin brothers <laughs> because he's really everywhere and he knows everybody. And uh, so I, I don't know that if I have ever met a better connected person like him and he's really supportive and mm -hmm. he's doing a lot of um, things all around and try really to support entrepreneurs and to give them platforms or to give them opportunities and uh, yeah, Pedro, you're a cool guy. Yeah, looking forward to 2019 because you've got many things planned and yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe together. <coughs> 
we can create an order. That's true, that's true. So that's a lot about 2018. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it was a really great and important year for us, but the next year is behind the corner. 